Hello guys, in this video I want to explain a few ways how to add additional field into store for example method in controller. A typical example would be what if you want to add a user ID for each new model. So task create and you need to assign user ID that would come from authenticated user session like auth ID. Where you would put that user ID? There are a few ways. First, the direct way is to do that directly in the controller. If you use, for example, form requests, and I'm a big fan of using form requests, after that validation, you have request validated array. And to add user ID to that, all you need to do is plus user ID auth ID, like this. Provided, of course, that this controller method is under middleware auth, and you do have that auth ID here. Otherwise, you need to have some if statement here or try catch or something. So that's one way directly in the controller, but we can move it elsewhere deeper in Laravel logic and automate it for all the controllers, for example. A typical place for that would be observer. So you do PHP artisan make observer task observer, for example, with model task, and it generates a few methods for you, like created, updated, deleted, and others. But also you can specify creating, not just created. So created is fired after the eloquent creation of the model. Creating happens before. And then in here, when you provide the task as a parameter, you can override or add more fields here, and they would be saved before the creating of the model. And then in the controller, you don't need to do that at all. The controller stays shorter and the logic is passed in the observer. That said, this observer method is not officially documented in Laravel docs. I wonder why, maybe because it's not kind of officially recommended to do that. I'm not sure, but it's still possible to use observers. And then two more ways to do the same thing. Another place where you could hide that logic potentially is the model itself. So do not create a separate observer. You can create a boot method inside of the model called the parent boot and then do basically the same thing as the observer creating and then you add user ID. It's basically the same thing as creating here, just in a different place in the model itself. And side note, maybe you would say that it's possible to use attributes for that, like mutator in the model, but mutators and attributes are used only for transforming the same value into something else. So for example, if you pass user ID, you could transform it to some other value. But in this case, I'm talking about the example of passing a new field. So you cannot do set user ID attribute because there's no user ID passed in the first place from the request. Okay, so that's third way. And I want to summarize the second and third way. So observer or the model automated user ID assignment. This is pretty dangerous and risky because in this case, user ID is coming in the controller. But what if that model would be created from somewhere else in the future? It may be another controller, it may be some service class, it may be artisan command, it may be automated test, it may be tinker, it may be by yourself or by some other developers in the future. So are you absolutely sure that you need to add that user ID for all of those cases in the observer or in the model? So before moving that from controller, from your specific case, from your specific request to globally observer or model, think twice, does it really need to work that way globally? And if you don't want to get it global and want it to stay in the controller, but at the same time you want to keep controller short, there is another way, which I found out pretty recently. I've never done it this way personally myself, but from a tweet by Laravel updates tips and tricks, I found out this. So you can override the validated method of form request and then add whatever you want here using parent validated and array merge, or you can use the same plus syntax that I've used in the beginning of this video and add user ID. So it would be returned here in the request validated automatically to the controller. Not sure, I haven't used it personally myself. I've been always using either in the controller, so it would be directly more readable what is happening. Or if you want to hide that, I personally used observers or model boot method. What is your preference? What are you using if you want to add a new field here in situations like this? Share in the comments below. 
And if you want more Laravel tips, tricks, tutorials, and courses, visit my newly refreshed laraveldaily.com, which I will advertise on this channel more often because I'm moving from Teachable Platform to laraveldaily.com. So there will be always new articles. You can search for YouTube video here as well. On the website, there are premium courses, so you can subscribe to yearly membership to get premium articles like this one about inertia. And you can subscribe to all the new content that I will publish here and on YouTube channel. There is a link newsletter on top. You can click it and visit the MailChimp landing page. It's not really fancy, but this is how MailChimp presents the email newsletter archive. So you can read the archive, read the past issues and subscribe, join the mailing list, join more than 6,000 subscribers at the moment. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.